There's nothing more fun than bringing a new puppy into your home. However, those times can be challenging and a little bit stressful, but if you're prepared and set up for success, then the time can be as easy and fun as possible. At Wonder Puppy, we like to think of our relationship with our dog as being like the parent of a furry kid. And that's because dogs rely on us for everything, their food, their shelter, their love, and their guidance. What most people think of as bad behavior is actually normal dog behavior. Dogs will dig, chew, bark, and jump. That's what they're programmed to do before birth. So it's up to us to be patient and set them up for success and show them how to behave in a human's world. The first step in puppy parenting is providing for your dog their basic needs, like nutrition and physical and mental exercise. In a future video, we'll go into detail with what makes a good quality diet. However, to start off, the most important thing is that your dog food is primarily meat and animal product, and there are no or few carbohydrates or grains. If you're feeding a dry kibble diet, I suggest that you add supplements such as enzymes and probiotics and maybe a salmon oil. This will make the dry kibble easier to digest and easier for your puppy to absorb the nutrients. You also want to consider what else you're adding to your dog's diet, such as the treats you might be using for training and the chew sticks for when they're teething. A healthy chew stick option is a bully stick. The treats that you feed your dog should also be of high quality. The treats we like to use are actually a full complete diet. Another important point is how much you're feeding your dog. In the morning, I suggest that you measure out how much your daily food is for your dog and take out a portion to account for all the treats and the chew sticks. This will keep your dog from growing too fast. If they eat too much, they can have growth spurts and that's not good for their joints. Another basic need that's important to consider is mental and physical exercise for your puppy. They're extremely important for your dog's well-being and will help them with their good behavior. For mental exercise, your dog should earn all of their food from food puzzles and training and socialization. If you're feeding dry food, you can put it in a food ball. You just put it in, screw on the top, and go. It gives your dog something to do and gives you a break. We want our dogs to become chewaholics. That means chewing on the right things. The first time you give your dog a Kong, you want to make it super easy and high value. So put something in it like a high value treat and peanut butter. Once your dog is good at it, you can switch them over to a lower value but still nutritious version of the Kong, which is what we call the Wonder Puppy Kong Mix. The Wonder Puppy Kong Mix consists of brown rice cake, water, and a can of food. If you want to make multiple Kongs at one time, you can use three rice cakes to one half cup water with one can of dog food. If you want to make Kong more challenging, then you can freeze it for a Kong sickle. Another way to provide mental exercise while establishing your parenting role is by having your dog earn life rewards, like sitting before going through the door or lying down before dinner. You can also take your food with you out and about for socialization. That way when they see new things, they get a reward and that creates good associations. The saying is true, a tired dog is a good dog. So that means providing plenty of exercise for your puppy. To give the best quality exercise, we suggest having a variety of different ways of exercising, at least two to three times per day and in different locations. When puppies are young, their bones are still fusing, so we wanna be careful not to over-exercise them and most of their exercise will actually be gotten through play. The best kind of exercise involves you. Dogs that play with you are dogs that stay out of trouble. We suggest getting your dog into fetch and playing the chase it game. That's a great way to exercise and bond with you at the same time. Of course, there are many other things your puppy may need, but the two most important ones are nutrition and exercise. Now that we've talked about all the basic needs, let's talk about setting up for success with clear communication. To make it simple for you, just remember this, MRR, most reliable route. M stands for management to prevent what you don't want. R stands for reward for encouraging what you do want. And the second R, is for redirecting or removing your puppy if things go wrong. We call these oops moments. In the beginning when you have a puppy, it's going to be pretty much 90% management, 10% reward training. Over time, that'll change places and it'll become 10% management and about 90% training. By using the MRR method, you'll be able to prevent the habits that you don't want and promote the ones that you do, kind of like building muscles at the gym. Every time you lift that barbell, you're going to strengthen the muscle. So you want to strengthen all of the good muscles that you want, like sits and downs, and you want to prevent the ones that you don't want and let them atrophy, like chewing on the wrong things and jumping on people. There are many ways to use management to set your dog up for success, like having a fence so they can't run away, or stepping on the leash so they can't jump, or even covering things that they might want to chew or putting them away, puppy-proofing your house. 
A great way to puppy proof your house is to actually get down on your knees and see the house from your puppy's point of view. This will show you what's likely for your puppy to get into and to be tempting for them. We want to give our dogs progressively more responsibility. The least amount of responsibility includes a crate. The next size up might be a small room with a baby gate or something like the kitchen where there's not too much to get into. As they age and have more practice and success, you can extend those boundaries to larger space. And if things go wrong, you can always go back and make the space smaller again. This keeps your puppy safe and from getting into things they shouldn't. It's a good idea when you're confining your dog to have a nice easy route for a potty area. And if you're gonna be gone for an extended period of time, you might need an indoor potty area, but you wanna make sure that it looks different than anything else in the house. A couple of other really useful management tools are called Parket Pals and Training Tails. Parket Pals and Training Tails are for limiting your dog's freedom while at the same time teaching them boundaries. That way you can easily intercept if they start to get into trouble, like chasing the cat or jumping on the couch. And of course, for safety, you would never wanna leave your dog unsupervised when using these things. Now that we've talked about management, let's talk about the tools for training our dogs using rewards. The three things that you need are a treat pouch, high quality and a variety of treats, and a clicker. Think of your clicker like a camera. Anything you want to see more of, take a picture of that behavior and treat. Those behaviors will become your dog's good habits. We suggest having at least two training sessions per day for at least 15 minutes with your puppy. We will go into much more detail later on how to clicker train your dog, but for now, this is a great start. If you're set up for success with a good management and training plan in effect, then unwanted behavior shouldn't happen very often. However, if your puppy does misbehave, instead of just shouting no, redirect or remove your puppy to prevent unwanted behavior from happening again. If your puppy jumps on you, remove them from being able to do it again by standing on the leash. If your dog is found chewing on something that they shouldn't, then redirect them to something that they should chew on. And going forward, you can go back to your management plan so that your dog doesn't repeat it in the future. The only time that you'd want to ignore unwanted behavior is if the attention is directed towards you. If your dog is trying to get your attention by barking or jumping or being a pushy puppy, you'd want to remove yourself and then wait at least five seconds for good behavior before you give them attention again. An alternative to this might be giving your dog a timeout. I use timeouts not so much as punishment as I use them for a way for your dog to just have a space to calm down in. Now you have all the tools to use an organic parenting approach, from meeting the basic needs with nutrition and exercise, to clear communication using the most reliable route method, managing to prevent what you don't want, reward training to encourage what you do want, and redirecting or removal when things go wrong. This will help puppyhood be easy, fun, and successful.